Welcome back to Dusting History. Today's image is a swimming carnival from uh, St Kilda in Victoria, which is close by where I live. Now this uh, structure doesn't exist anymore, there's now a lovely pier and a, and a cafe at the end. So as usual, I'll crop it and knock the colour out, reducing it to a black and white image, and then proceed to do a curves adjustment layer to that. Now in the curves adjustment layer you can see the histogram there shows that there's not much information in the whites there and not, nothing in the black so I'm just going to pull those little sliders in to make it a, a truly black to white image and then just adjust the curve a little bit to, uh, to play with the gamma in the center of the image. As usual, my next step is to use the remove tool to remove any scratches and dust. I absolutely think the power of this image is all these people watching. I mean the guys wrestling in the centre of frame are great, but uh, I spend most of my time just watching these people and looking at all the different characters and expressions and the outfits. I'm just going to build a gradient for the sky um, and I'm going to sample the colors from the picture. You'll see I do that and then I actually just go and, and make my own little uh, sample. <laughs> Change the colors around a bit or at least the, the levels not the colors. Now here's some reference of the exact same area that's St Kilda Pier as it looks now and I've been over to palette.fm and got some appropriate palettes. The top two there I delete, I don't actually use. The bottom one it serves as a reference or a starting point which is great as, as a basis but you'll see now that I'm painting I eventually paint over every square inch of the thing with my own colours. Somehow I find it's guess a really good launching point. It's not necessary but it's really really useful just to, to put in some base tones. There's a lot of green in the water and I'd start to introduce a lot more blue from the sky and try to work on that angle of refraction where the, the more glancing angles get more blue from the sky but faces of the waves facing us get a little bit more of that green colour and I'm pretty rough with that, I'm pretty haphazard but it just does introduce some more colour or, or tone. Currently in this palette there's a lot of yellows and reds in the water and things, I have to knock all that out. So this is where the fun starts. This is where I start to take these uh, very wishy-washy palette that I have here, just a rough indication of tone, and swap it out for a lot of hand painting, and go through every single person and put in an appropriate colour for the outfit that they might be wearing at the time. 
Also, you'll see that most everybody's got grey faces and grey hands. I have to put skin tone on everybody and uh, neutralise a lot of the whites, which have got a lot of that green cast. It's about this time I decide I need to find some reference because I'm just making things up as I go along. So a quick Google search for Victorian garments of that kind of era. And I actually noticed there's a yellow one that's not too far off the yellow I picked for this woman's dress. And I was quite hesitant about the color that I'd chosen. So that was uh, reassuring anyway. In the background, I've just got another monitor open and I'm constantly looking at reference and trying to find um, what kind of colors garments were made of, of that time. And, it's very easy to go super colourful. I haven't recorded the entire process, but I do actually step through every single person.
It's amazing to me that as soon as you've got skin tone and a nice even colour on the clothing on a character, they really pop out of the frame. They really become an individual. Those little girls look almost like dolls. <laughs> I'm just so weirded out by them. Now rather than just show you the final result, I thought it would be fun to show you what the paint layer looked like. So this is it. <laughs> That's what I painted. And uh, you can see it's pretty rough, it's pretty indicative, um, but I think that sort of helps not be too prescriptive. And you can kind of see when you go back to look at the original, which you'll do in a second, how everybody just blends together but just adding this color really really makes them a crowd of individuals really enjoyed this one tons of fun thanks for joining me we'll see you next time